Greetings everyone, my name is Zetterville, and welcome to my let's try of the alpha demo of Iron Meat, a 2D classic run and gun arcade shooter in development by Raz. I'll be spending around 15 to 20 minutes on this title, giving my first impressions along the way. So without further ado, let's begin. I'll be playing through both levels in this demo. So here we are in the forest. We can jump and shoot in 8 different directions. However, we are one hit point wonder, so we'll immediately die upon impact with an enemy or an enemy projectile. So just like Contra. I presume hard mode increases both the number of enemies and complexity of the bullet patterns. Also as usual, I'll be providing links to this demo in the description below. Our first new weapon is the Burst Rifle, or whatever B stands for. Fires a lot faster than the base machine gun. Be warned, as we can be attacked from any angle. Ah, B+. So if I pick up two of the same weapon, it'll upgrade it. I don't want to pick up the spread gun or shotgun yet. I only use this for a while. Thankfully, I also started with 20 lives instead of the usual two in Contra. In fact, when I saw a gameplay video of this game, probably from an earlier build, I saw that the player started out with only two lives. Thankfully that was changed here. Boy, that was a close one. Already I can see three types of enemies, well technically four or five. We have the regular runners, two kinds of them. We have the turrets slash cannons, those mechs, as well as those grenade throwers. Not to mention snipers. Can't forget these cannons as well. So this is a mini boss. That was easy. I suppose it's because I have a really powerful weapon. You are rewarded for keeping your powerful weapons, but keeping them is the hard part, especially in later levels. I like how you can destroy all these lights, although it does nothing. Considering that this is an arcade running gun shooter, I wouldn't mind if there was a score counter on the top. See what I mean by a quick death? I should have turned left earlier. I don't think this is actually the machine gun, it's the end gun or something. The normal gun. And I'm back up to a level 1 burst cannon, or burst rifle. I wonder what the max weapon level is.
That second mini boss encounter was slightly more challenging with the addition of that sniper as well as all those missiles, but otherwise it was still rather simple. So an energy ball. Better against stronger foes, I suppose. Music stopped, that means there's a boss battle coming up. This giant tank. Well, I was hoping I could duck under it. So it alternates from firing above and below. And now that's on fire. Well, I should have ducked down over here. Now we have these bubble spreads, which I can destroy by the way. For a moment there, I thought it was going to ram into me. Uh, Well, that was easy. I was expecting there to be another form. It was a step in difficulty in comparison with the two mini-bosses, but... I was totally expecting there to be a gone red form, a second form, where all of its projectile attacks went faster, and its pattern got harder. Time and lives lost. I would like if there was a number of enemies dealt with or destroyed counter as well. So far I'm liking this title. The graphics kind of feel in between an 8-bit and 16-bit title. Maybe quote-unquote 12-bit. Alright, this is the actual machine gun. And at level 2, it's a double machine gun. Compared with the previous- oh, wow that was a bad one. As I was saying, Compared with the previous level, this stage is a lot more vertical. And that's neat. Even though I died and got the machine gun again, I started with level 2 instead of level 1. It doesn't reset back to level 1. Well, I didn't expect that to drop an enemy. And now I'm back to level 1 machine gun. Kinda strange why after I died that time, once I picked up the machine gun, it set me back to level 2. Giant laser cannons now. So, you is a long laser, essentially. And now I have to worry about these giant lasers, which will also insta-give me. And I have to worry about the bubbles as well. This first mini-boss encounter was rather simple. Oh, nope, it's not done yet. My bad. Now I'll swap to a second form. I also like how the screen zoomed out once we entered this mini-boss room. That way we have more room to maneuver around this arena.
Overall, a solid mini boss. A bit more difficult than the two mini bosses in stage one, but a nice difficulty progression. Everything was telegraphed. Now I'll stick with this weapon. For weaker enemies, the more rapid-firing weapons are a lot more useful- Oh, I didn't see that enemy there. As I was saying, for weaker enemies, the more rapid-firing weapons are a lot more useful. So here's the spread gun, or the shotgun really. Music stops, so this is the Boston counter. That line is left untranslated, by the way. So we're being attacked by this organism in the tube. Oh yeah, having the shotgun here is pretty useful. Especially for destroying all those bubbles. Dropping fireballs here. Well, by position this poorly. Now avoid all the bouncing balls and destroy the warm enemies on the bottom. I also like how there's clear telegraphs for all these attacks, as well as showcasing how much damage the boss is taking. As you can see in the background, as the boss loses health, his tube grows more cracked. I positioned myself badly there. Unlike the first boss encounter in the forest, this boss battle is a lot more enjoyable. It feels a lot more fulfilling and satisfying to fight, although the dialogue needs to be translated to English, unless it was intended to be untranslated. Despite being the base weapon, the normal gun deals a pretty good amount of DPS. So that was stage 2. Sadly, there was no ending or outro part of the stage as there's no level 3 yet. So that was a demo, 
and I'd say that the shaft was a better level as it had more advanced enemy encounters and the mini boss and boss encounters were more elaborate and had more phases. But the boss or the shaft didn't really have a second phase, same with the forest. I'd like to see if the bosses get a bit faster when they're on their pinch mode. But overall, I enjoyed this experience. Controls were solid and spot on. All the encounters were well telegraphed, especially the mini boss and boss encounters. Plus, there are multiple difficulty settings, so if you're having trouble, go to the lower difficulty setting. I wish the best of luck to the developer of this title. This holds some promise. Well then, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!